guys, it's me Lauren, and today we're going to be showing you how to groom a horse. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start out with the curry comb just to get all the dirt underneath their um, coat. And there are two main types of curry, actually there are more, but these are the two that I like to use. You can get a harder curry comb that has ribs, and this is just a rubber one, and it's a little bit harder, and it's good for whenever you have really tough hair. But I typically like to use this type of curry comb. It's a double-sided one, and it's just rubber, and it's a little bit softer than the other one. And it's just good whenever they don't have much dirt, but just to get some of the dust up. So what I'm going to be using the light um, double-sided rubber curry. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to, I like to use the soft, the smaller side, just to really um, get all the dust out from under the coat. And you're going to slide your hand underneath where the soft side is on the palm of your hand. And what you're going to do is you're just going to start up at their, anytime you groom a horse, you're going to start on their neck and work backwards. So what you're going to do is you're going to start this and just do small circular motions to get all the dust and dirt out from under their coat. And you're going to do this all the way down. So, um, you always want to do both sides, at the, like not at the same time, obviously, but you want to do both sides um, for each step before moving on. But for today's video, I'm just going to do this one side so you guys can see. But you're going to want to curry really, really good all the way down their body. And so all, most horses like being curry, and it um, just kind of feels good for them. So you can even, with soft curries like this, you don't want to use like the hard black rubber curry because that's too harsh on their legs. But you can use these soft curries on their legs. And you want to just start up at their shoulders and go all the way down. And don't forget to do the inside. You just want to get all the dirt and dust off. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take, um, it's either called a stiff brush or a dandy brush. It can be synthetic or a real horsehair one. This is one that's synthetic and this is the one that I'll be using. You just want to make sure that it's um, pretty dense in and that you have a lot of bristles in there just to make sure that it gets everything off and it doesn't like you spot. So again, you're going to want to start up at the top of their neck, and you're just going to want to do not super short, but not too long, um, but kind of hard strokes all over just to get all the dust and dirt that you just curried up. So you're going to want to just do strokes like this, and don't be afraid to put a little bit of elbow grease in there and kind of push on it when you do. Um, it's not going to hurt them at all. It's, but it's just, it'll actually, most of the time, it'll feel good for them. So you just really want to make sure you get everything. And don't forget to go under their belly too. And as we curry their legs, we want to make sure that we brush their legs too. So again, you're going to start at the shoulder and just work your way down, making sure that you brush everything. So you're also going to want to make sure that you brush and curry their face because dirt and sweat collects there also and it can get really gross and uncomfortable for the horse. So when you're going to curry their face, you can use the same double-sided rubber curry that we use on their body or you can also use a small little circular curry. These are really good. You want to make sure that they have really short and thin um, bristles, rubber bristles on them just so that that is sure not to hurt your horse on their face because it is a sensitive area. So I'm going to be using my rubber curry today just because that's easier for me. And you're going to want to put your hand in it and start and you're just going to go on, on the top of the face and go down. You don't want to curry their nose because that's really sensitive but you can curry all of them here um, above their eyes and all the way down on their cheek all over. You especially want to make sure you get the area where the brow band goes because it, that tends to sweat a lot. And you can curry right here but you want to make sure that you don't get too close to the eye because wherever the hair gets super thin that's kind of an area where you just be kind of rubbing on their skin 
So you don't want to get too close to the eye area, but you can go right here. So now that we've curried, you're going to want to use a face brush. And so you can have, there are a lot of different types of face brushes. You can use, they make them that are super soft and the goat, or like the goat hair ones. Those are also really nice, but I like to use a synthetic kind of stiffer brush for um, the main face part and then use the softer brush just for around his eye area and on his nose. So this is just the one that I use. It's um, an Epina brush and it looks like a flower. I find that this one's really good because since it's a, more of a circular kind of shape, you can kind of swirl it and it works really well. So when you brush, you want to do kind of do strokes that go down to get all the stuff that you just curry. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go over their eyes and around their brow band area and get all the dirt that you just curried off. Pretty much with a stiff brush, you can do everywhere that you just curry because it's not going to hurt them. But if you can't curry there, then don't brush with a stiff brush. So for the more sensitive areas, like around their eyes and on their nose, you want to use a little brush that's really, really soft and moves easily so that you know it's not going to hurt their sensitive areas. The goat hair ones are really, really good for this. And I prefer to use a small one just because it, you can just get in more crevices and it's easier to use on the small areas. So with this brush, you can go right up over their eyes like this. Not like over the whole eye, but like on top of it, like on their eyelid. And then you can go under their eye. This brush, it's, this one's also more of a synthetic kind of brush. And this one, it's stiff enough to where it gets dirt, but it's soft enough to not hurt their sensitive areas. better, but you could just use a flathead screwdriver if that's all you have. You just want to make sure that it's flat so you can get in the crevices. So when picking up this weight, you're going to want to start, you're going to want to put some weight to shift it over, and you're going to want to go all the way down, and then you're going to want to make sure that you hold this foot. Right here is the frog. That's tissue, and that's a really sensitive area, so you're not going to want to pick at that. But what you are going to want to do is make sure that you get these little grooves that are right next to it so that whenever you're riding them, it doesn't irritate the frog. So you're just going to want to pick right there. And then my hook pick has a brush at the bottom, so I like to just kind of brush over. And then you just let them set their own foot down. You don't want, you don't want to drop their foot, but you want to allow them to set their foot down the them. <laughs> So after you've completed all of this, you're ready to tack up your board. I hope you liked this video, and please comment and rate, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more videos, on, if you want more horse-related videos, and how-tos, and all that kind of stuff. So don't forget to subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.